I've always wanted to do an unboxing video, so here's one with a small history lesson attached via one of the best selling and simplest box cameras from the mid 1960s. Let's do some vintage unboxing with the breakthrough Polaroid Swinger Instant Camera. The artwork on this packaging is modern and simple. It's a design that would still work today and just shows you that today's fancy packaging and designs are nothing new. On opening the box we're greeted by a beautiful woman who will show us how to use this camera, a simple setup guide and the original 1967 receipt. Lifting up the folded cardboard inside we see the camera is frozen in time. It looks as new as the day it was bought. I'm not going to bore you with the technical history of this camera. I have those links in the information area of this video and it's well worth the read. What I would like to do is show you where this camera fits into my family's photo album and the beautiful simplicity of this camera. Okay, let's start with the receipt. Purchased at Grace Brothers Chatswood, I can see the old format phone number. It was a cash sale on this date and there's the price. Decimal currency was only introduced the year before. The amount tendered was $25. My mum remembers this $22.45 has been quite a sum back in 1967. This was an expensive Christmas present, even though the camera was marketed as an inexpensive and convenient form of photography. In its day, it was the equivalent of a go-anywhere digital camera. It used a black and white self-developing film, which was pulled from the camera after a photo was taken. In a short time, the film developed and your photo could be seen. The only adjustment which could be made was the aperture. This was adjusted via the red knob which also activated the shutter. A red matrix below the viewfinder was used to determine the exposure and the aim was to see the word yes. This camera also catered to flash photography and batteries were needed to power the flash and exposure meter of the camera. This passage from the user manual caught my eye and it's worth a read and a listen. Very much in context to the era this camera was released in. It's a very Austin Powers passage. Polaroid believes picture taking should be a spontaneous act, something exciting that happens between you and your subject. So we made the Swinger, the most spontaneous camera in the world. It's very light, it swings easily from your wrist, you don't have to open the camera to be ready. When you want to take a picture, swing it up. When yes appears, shoot. 10 seconds later, you zip off a beautiful black and white picture. Never before has there been so few steps between the impulse to shoot and the finished print. It's almost as though you wish the picture in your hand. Meet the Swinger. Even if you own a dozen cameras, you don't own anything like it at any price. I mean, <laughs> who in the hell wrote that passage? It just cracks me up. I don't know how I got through about, about laughing. It's great. So let's open her up and have a look inside. The first thing I noticed, the camera is made under license in the United Kingdom. Something you rarely see today. There's also a small compartment to house the batteries the camera required. And if I throw in an old photo, you can see where the film was exposed to the light. Let's not forget the most important feature of this camera, the wrist strap, which allows the camera to swing like a fashion accessory. The photo format produced glossy prints, which were roughly 3 inches or 75 millimeters in width. Quite small compared to today's standard photo prints. So what makes this little camera so special? Well, let's take a look at the photos it took back in the 1960s. The photos in my family's photo album that this camera took have stood the test of time. They still look vivid and detailed. It makes you wonder why such a great format of photography can die away. There's lots of people out there who know this was a very good thing. And honestly, I'll have to support their claims. I can only find 30 photos derived from this camera. The last is dated June 1972. During the rest of the 1970s, our photo album had all the hallmarks of faded color prints. Let's not mention any names here, all I will say, this is not Polaroid products. Sometimes the new product you adopt is inferior to what it replaced. This is always the gamble when purchasing new technology. Now you have to ask yourself, are we moving forwards in our relentless chase of technology? Hoping I've produced a video which gives a snapshot of a beautiful camera system. Good luck finding anything like it today.